Okay, tuber is just where I'm at right now. It's only been probably, yeah, I don't know. Let's see, what time is it? 4.30. So it's only been about 30, 40 minutes or so. All right. Here's where I'm at. Okay, now I did change a few things from what I said in the last video. I took the battery out. I went ahead and took the whole breathing system off. It's just laying right over there. There's the exhaust system. I'll show you that in a second. Disconnected the temperature sending unit. Disconnected this water hose from the thermostat housing. Because this thermostat housing is part of the head. Now, yes, you can take these two bolts off here, take it off, take it all apart, but why? Okay, I've loosened this nut up right here. You gotta take that loose. I've taken this fuel line loose and I've run it back through this back spot here. I'm gonna put my fingers through there so you can see them right here. I just pull it back through so it'll stick up here and not drain any diesel. The oil is drained. I'm just kind of letting it sit. It looks like it's dripping a little bit there on the floor. Okay. Got the upper radiator hose off. Ah. Uh, Trying to make sure it's everything I've done on this side so far. I should just disconnect this hose, and all you do is, you know, just spin it down. You're done. Unhook that. Unhook this, and that's all you're gonna unhook basically. Cause this tube here, you don't have to worry about. Oop, get to your frame here. Cause it runs back down to the intake housing down here. Uh, you will have to take the injector lines off. I'll do that next. Uh, I went ahead and took the front nose off just cause I. Straighten the bottom up down there. It's all broken. But on this side, as you noticed, I took the bolt out of the brace here, loosen that one up. I put the bolt back in the head. So I don't know where it's at. <clears throat> yes, I did have to take that tack line loose. Main reason being, I will show you on this exhaust. That new exhaust gasket stayed on the exhaust manifold. The old one I took off were individual gaskets. They weren't a long line, so I didn't have to take it loose. And I just slipped behind that tag line last time I did that. This time I had to take it loose, which was no big deal. It was only finger ties, so no big problem. Uh, let's say I pulled the alternator back. Took those bolts loose and just slipped right out of the exhaust here. Um, you see I got that tag line? Stretch over right behind there. <coughs> um, so far, pretty much everything I've taken loose has been 12 millimeter. The old uh, drain plug is a 19 millimeter. But everything else has either been a Phillips head screw, screwdriver, or a 12 millimeter. You know the hose clamps are. I'll show you all these cheap, cheesy, foreign things. You can use a Phillips head or. Uh, 3 eighths maybe, take them loose, something like that. Uh, but that's pretty much about where it's at at the moment. And on the bottom, on that pin that goes to the front end, there's a cotter pin on the back side and a nut. You have to take the cotter pin out, take the nut off, and you pull that pin out through the front. I was telling you all wrong, I said you had to pull a bolt off. It's just been a little bit since I've done this, so... Um, other than that's pretty much right where I'm at at the moment. I said it took me 30 minutes to do this. And yes, I did use my handy dandy uh, impact wrench. No. But next is to take the uh, injectors loose. I do not have rubber caps to put on them no more. I don't know what happened to them. And then I will pull the valve cover off. And then I will get another attachment which... To me, I'll come right back here. It'll be just a split second for me to be 10 minutes or so. And then we'll re edit into this video and just make it a longer video. So, I'm going to set y'all guys down and I'm going to get this all off and I'll see y'all in just a quick sec. Alright, we're back now. Alright, as y'all can see, I've got the valve cover removed. Uh, I went ahead and took that tube off that run down to here just simply because uh, I see the underside of it. It's pretty damn nasty. There you go. It's pretty dang nasty and dirty. So I didn't want any of that dirt falling <clears throat> to the valve train. 
And yes, on this, you gotta pull this bolt, that bolt, and that bolt, and pull the whole rocker assembly off to get to the head bolt, which lie underneath it. So I gotta get that done, and then I'm just gonna take these injector lines loose here. I was gonna pull them loose up here, and just take the injector lines off. Uh, I may still do that. I don't know yet. Sorry, I'm getting a little shaky here, but uh. I'd rather not, but <laughs> I might go ahead because it's going to be kind of hard to get them head bolts underneath them. I mean, they're really not that bad, really. So I might leave those on there. Uh, trying to think what else I did. I just took the valve cover off, which, like I said, underneath them nuts and that metal uh, cap, there is actual cone rubber gaskets underneath there. I'll show you what those look like. I quit kicking everything with big clod hoppers. Yeah, come on camera. There we go. That's what they look like. They sit right in the valve cover just like that. And then the cap goes on a nut. So that's the way I do it. I just get a flathead screwdriver right underneath it and start twisting it like a nut and it comes right off. Otherwise you can sit there and pry them off but it's, you might take a chance tearing it up. <laughs> So, like I said, the next step is remove that rock arm assembly and then pull the push rods out. Then I'll take, I'm going to go ahead and just take the inject lines off. It's easier that way. Set those aside and then start busting all the bolts loose. I uh, can't remember, I think, this bolt. I can't remember. No, I don't think you have to get either one of those water pump bolts off. I think I did it last time I realized I didn't have to because they do not go off into the head at all. Uh, the water pump actually runs off the block. So I'll get that done, get all that pulled apart, separated, and then we'll get this head sitting on uh, some cardboard. I'll probably set it up. Probably just in this chair, move this coat and sit in the chair for now. <coughs> And then I'll pull that head gasket off, set it aside, and then I'll get started on taking this front end part down there. And uh, when I get to that point, I'm get my daughter over here to be a camera woman so she can hold the camera steady enough again. And get that, show y'all jacking this up, get the front pan out and hold nine yards. <coughs> now, last time I did this, I used my engine hoist, which y'all see is in the corner. Problem is, last time I used that, it had something, I can't remember what it had on it, but it fell off and hit the leg and busted that top wheel right there. So it doesn't turn. So I'm going to do it this time probably just off my jack. And hope for the best. So, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, rocker assembly off and get the head, uh, injector lines off. Um... I believe it's to be a 17 millimeter, but me, <laughs> being I don't want to dig around, uh, 11 16 is a little bit big, but it'll still fit it. They're not going to be very tight. There's 17 right there, so. 17 millimeter. Just like a glove. So, um, I just use a crescent wrench to take the nuts off of the valve cover. I think they're like 11 millimeter, 12 millimeter, something like that. I think 11, 10 or 11. Uh, I'm gonna say 10 millimeters what they are. But I'm gonna pull these injector lines off, pull that uh, rocker assembly, so it should be 15 millimeters on that, and then it'll be 17 millimeter on the head bolts. <coughs> so I'll see y'all guys in the next little clip. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna edit this all together and make a one long video. And kind of go from there, so we'll see y'all in a minute. <coughs> hey, tubers, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so y'all guys see, I get the head off. Um, it's actually almost nine o'clock at night now. I had this off a long time ago. Um, had to run to town. That's been probably about three hours ago, or something. A little after six. And uh, I'll show you. When I encountered, so I got a bag here with a nifty assistant. I took the head off. 
That's what I found. This little head bolt had twisted off. Now, this is not a proper fix. I do not advise anybody to ever do this. But I'm going to attempt it because these outer head bolts do not get very much torque on them. So I picked up some bolts from uh, Lowe's. They are right there. And what I'm about to do is try to make sure, make sure that they're going to in. Nikki, assistant, help me. Here. Grab that bolt and pull on it. And pull it out of the bag. There you go. Thank you. Now these are standard bolts. They didn't have these in stainless steel or hardened bolts or any grade eights or nothing. So, But it appears to thread right down in that hole, which is good. So, I think I might be good on that because I said they don't. These don't torque down very, very much. If I'm okay, uh, these four here or two, four. No, I can't think. Those uh, inner eight bolts are what actually torque the head down. These are just side bolts, so they only get. Uh, I think it's 25 to 35 foot pounds torque, I believe, or something like that. And it's only like 50 something or 60 pounds of torque on the center bolts. Not very much. Which I thought was weird for being a little diesel motor, but this is considered the high compression diesel because the motor's just got the dish in the piston. But from what I'm understanding, that's not a very high compression motor anyway. I don't know. Haven't a clue? But here's the head. As y'all can see, that head gasket is still in good shape. Mine's missing just a little bit around there, but no issues with it, so which is good. Which is awkward because this thing has no dowel pins to hold this head in place at all. And what worries me is that one right there is a little off. But the bolt holes are dead on, so that may cause a little bit of an issue there. Which will be right back here in that little hole there. And it actually looks like it hits around the hole pretty good, the port pretty good, so. Which I believe is going to be an oil port, not water cool, the water jets. Because there's water jet, water jet, steam ports, and you know. <clears throat> And yes, it does look like it's had water on top of these pistons. That was when I pulled the head off because there's still a little bit of residual in that head. Unfortunately, you can't get 100% of the water out of them unless you just blow a bunch of air and heat and everything else to it to dry it out. But you're going to have a little bit of residual. So, that's where I'm at. I said the head's off. Um, I'm probably going to knock off for the night. And get back out here tomorrow and finish this thing up. And I'll get more videos and all that. And I'll go ahead and upload this one. So. And this is a Mitsubishi K3G. Three cylinder diesel. But, uh. Like I said tomorrow I'll get video. I'll get the old pan off. Uh. First, first I'll get the front end jacked up. Center pan out. Axle pushed over. Oil pan drop and get the rods out and everything else I'll get video doing some of that stuff and <clears throat> all that good jazz <clears throat> and we'll go from there and we'll start the series of reinstalling and putting everything back together so if you ain't subscribed subscribe rate my videos comment let me know what y'all guys think and say good night weird she's weird Anyways, y'all guys have a good one. Bye.